my wife eight years ago at a small international school. When the time came for us to think about looking for a new school to go to together, many of our colleagues had advice. They told us, look, you should probably think about one city, two different schools, or just applying to singles. An international school might not be ready for a same-sex couple. We ignored their advice, and we have since moved two more times choosing to ignore that advice. But if I'm honest, those comments, they've always stuck with me. Whenever I've taken on a new job, I felt like because my partner and I were a different type of couple, wow, we must really owe the school something. The blank slide behind me is there as a placeholder. I hope that it will remind us of all the room that we have to have better conversations around what it might mean to be a queer educator in the international school community. People tell me all the time, though, hey, Trisha, attitudes have changed. We've made a lot of progress. And those same people are always shocked when I tell them, my wife and I have been stopped on the street just for holding hands. And we've been in that situation a few times where we're at a job fair and we're offered a contract, but we're told you'll need to have different housing and you'll have to keep your relationship a secret. I don't have these conversations all that often. Uh, to be honest with you, I've worked at six different international schools, and I've been asked by colleagues about my experiences of, about being a queer educator precisely zero times. And I get it. It's personal. I would ask that today and tomorrow you think about our conference theme, It's Personal, as a call to action as a reminder of the importance to engage with very personal perspectives. How do we do this? Your teachers, you know all too well the amazing, awesome power of a well-crafted question. What if you don't know what the right question to ask is? Or what if you are worried my question may offend? If you don't know the best question to ask, then please ask for questions from the best personal problem. Best possible person. <laughs> because if we really value diversity, we need to think really about how it is that we make diversity feel valued. And I'll tell you from experience that we do that by making time to have difficult conversations. I have thought so long and so hard about conversations that I would love to be having more often with my colleagues. And so I'll leave you this morning with three questions. Maybe you take them back to your campus. Question number one. You might be wondering, where can I show up to be a better ally? If you are that teacher who has the pride sticker on the outside of your classroom door, where else could you be as an ally? Digital spaces really, really matter. If you're on Twitter, these two hashtags have incredible, amazing resources coming through them all the time. Or if you're that teacher who's ever had a student tell another student in front of you, that's so gay, and you thought, I really don't know how to handle that. A queerendeavor.org has honest, real advice. Your feed can feed you different perspectives if you seek them out. The second question that I would love to be asked more regularly by colleagues is why I feel so strongly that usualized is the better term rather than normalized. Since when did any of us think that aspiring to just be normal was the best that we could do? I would love to see school campuses having queer culture pop up just a little bit more frequently. If you love playing music in the classroom, or if you have a school event coming up, please think carefully. Is every artist heterosexual? Is there ever a love song that comes on that tells the narrative of same-sex love? The last question, what can I do to be a better ally? The power of this question is within the frequency that it is asked. Please don't just ask this question because it's Equality Day or because it's Pride Month but ask it again and again, because we show we care by continuing conversations. Schools are not inclusive because they include people who are different. 
Schools are inclusive because they are willing to take on different types of dialogues and make it their mission to get personal now and again. That empty space, all that room that we have for conversations like these, today I hope that you will join me in filling them. Thank you.